Good morning, everyone. I am Trupti Panigrahi, Assistant Lecturer and Assistant Dean JGLS, and the moderator for today's session. It is my proud privilege to welcome you all to the first extended lecture of the Judicial Services Examination Lecture Series 2021. I'm excited to share that we planned these extended lectures after seeing the interest and enthusiasm of our students to pursue judicial services as a career choice after attending the lecture series. We hope these lectures motivate you even further for your preparations. It is an honor for us to have Professor Dr. Naresh Kumar Bell, former District and Sessions Judge UP Judicial Service, delivering the lecture on prelims, mains, and interviews, mantras for cracking the judicial services examinations. Professor Dr. Naresh Kumar Bell is a former District and Sessions Judge from UP Judicial Service, a gold medalist in LLB from Garhwal University, as well as LLM from Campus Law Center, University of Delhi. He has an experience of being an advocate from 1981 to 1984 at Dehradun. Pioneer in the field of legal aid, he established Dune Legal Aid Center at Dehradun in 1981 for providing free legal aid to downtrodden sections of the society. He has vast experience of coaching aspirants for various judicial services examinations in our country. He is the founder director of Dune Law Institute, Dehradun. He completed his PhD in law from Marshi Dayanand University, Rotak, way back in 1998. He has an experience of around 33 years as a judicial officer. Dr. Bal has experience of being a professor of law and director of Judicial Training Academy at Noida since four years. He has published various articles on the current legal topics in various newspapers, magazines, and journals. He has also edited various books in the field of law. Latest among them is Genesis to Terminus of Article 370, Social Legal Perspectives. He has convened and attended various conferences, seminars, and webinars of national and international levels. He has vast experience in the field of mediation and conciliation. He remains secretary of District Legal Aid Authority in various districts and also presided over as president of District Legal Aid Authority in various districts. His specialization relates to legislative drafting, research methodology, and judgment writing. He is well versed with traditional and modern teaching methodologies, equipment, multimedia, PowerPoint presentations, etc. Dr. Bal has attended various television talk shows on APN TV channel, Noida. He has written around 55 articles and research papers, which were published in various esteemed legal magazines and journals. Latest among them is the question of internet access, published in India Legal Magazine. Dr. Bal has participated in drafting the, the passage of Juvenile Justice Act 1986 and Legal Services Authorities Act 1987. In true sense, Dr. Bal has contributed significantly in changing the landscape of legal education in India. Professor Dr. Bal has mentored many judiciary aspirants and he has graciously agreed to share some tips and tricks with us today for preparations of judicial services examinations. I now humbly invite Professor Dr. Bal to deliver the lecture after which I'll be taking up your questions from the comment section in the last 15 minutes. Professor Bal, over to you. Thank you, Trupti. Thank you so much. My dear students, this placement lecture or online judicial training is a step towards the dais of a courtroom in which you are going to preside over very soon. So welcome to the online training on how to crack prelims, mains, and interview of judicial services competitive examinations at Jindal Global Law School. My dear students, here at Jindal Global Law School, we'll give you 360 degrees comprehensive approach to judicial competitive examinations. Our school, as all of you know, is the part of Jindal Global University, Sonipat, Haryana. So this, I have told you that why against my name, Dr. N.K. Behel, the word R in doctorate abbreviation is written in capital because this R indicates doctorate in research. Whereas the doctors, MBBS doctors are writing Dr. D capital, but R small. So word capital R in small size in the word doctor stands for academic research. Anyway, dear students, have you ever thought what is the distance between you and your goal of becoming a civil judge? 
इफ आई ट्रांसलेट इट इन हिंदी कभी आपने सोचा है कि आपके और आपके सपनों के बीच फासला कितना है ये फासला है सिर्फ तीन अक्षर का एक शब्द ओनली वन वर्ड डिस्टेंस इज देयर दैट इज योर एंडेवर योर एफर्ट्स हिंदी में बोले तो कोशिश सो यू विल हैव टू बी वेरी सिंसियरली इन्वॉल्व इन दिस एंडेवर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सक्सीड इन योर लाइफ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बिकम ए जुडिशियल ऑफिसर एंड यर स्टूडेंट्स all of you know what is success success is not a milestone it is a never ending race for perfection and as one of the chinese philosopher said that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step only but you will never finish the journey if you do not start so my dear students start your preparation from today itself no delay why i am saying so all of you have heard this rabbit and tortoise race story and you know the result that ultimately tortoise wins the race why because the rabbit who is faster in speed he thinks that there is a lot of time to complete the race whereas the tortoise makes a consistent but little and small efforts moment to moment every minute and he wins the race so moral of the story my dear students is that consistency in your studies is very important you may go at a small pace comparatively lower pace like tortoise but you must be very very consistent in your preparation from today itself and dear students all of you know that so far as judicial services competitive examination is concerned and especially for civil judge junior division we have three stages of examination first is preliminary stage which is always objective multiple choice questions are given to you and you are supposed to pick out the most correct answer then comes the mains examination which is always subjective essay type answers are to be written and then finally interview so dear students the fundamental mantra of preparation of these three stages of examination is the reading of the bare act coupled with one student edition textbook because bare acts are the backbone and basis for all the three stages of examination and if i may say so bare acts are like quran the holy book for competitive examination why i am saying so because every mcq every short question every long question have their roots from the bare act itself i request you to bring your bare acts in the class daily and go through them as many times as possible according to time at your disposal dear students this competitive examination is like a cricket match where i categorize preliminary stage equivalent to test match the prelim examination is very much like batting in a test match where the batsman does not hit all the deliveries he hits only those balls which are good and leaves the others so that he can continue batting for long without fear of getting out in prelims you should attempt only those questions in which you are 100% sure about the answer you must remember that if negative marking exists you should be very very careful while attempting multiple choice questions because negative marking can have a can cause havoc in your life because pin pointed and accurate study of the subject is required for attempting multiple choice questions as opposed to mains 
where you can deviate from 100% accuracy, but only to some extent. I'll give you one example. Say, for example, while attempting a full question of 40 marks on rest duty data, section 11 CPC. If you have forgotten one of the explanation out of eight explanations mentioned in section 11, it may not harm you as much as compared to negative marking in prelims, which may oust you from the competition altogether at prelims stage itself. You may not reach at the stage, second stage of mains. So you will have to be very, very careful in your preliminary examination. Now coming to the mains examination, I equate it with one day match, where in limited over, limited time, you have 30 minutes for answering each question. You will have to score as many runs as possible, as many score, as many marks as possible. And in this format, there is not much time for you to adjust and get used to the pitch. You need to start betting from the word go from the very beginning. And dear students, for this, writing practice is required. This is one of the greatest mantra that we are forgetting writing nowadays. Why? Because nowadays our fingers are working more on the keyboard and mobile. So mock attempting papers from previous years to get the hang of completing the paper within stipulated time is very essential. And for this writing practice, time management is most important. Because if you are to attempt five questions out of 10 and one is left, you are simply out of this entire competition. So while attempting mains examination, Time management is very important. For time management, dear students, you should know the art of condensation and expansion. One of the students in my first batch asked me a question, sir, what is the role of pressy writing in judicial competitive examinations? I told him that when you extract the ratio decedent die of a judgment, you should know the art of condensation. That is the role of pressy writing. <clears throat> and expansion, the role of writing essay. That is part of your curriculum in competitive examination. So for time management, if time is less, you may condense your answer. If time is more, you can expand your answer. Again, an example of residue decata again. If you are to cover all the ingredients of section 11 CPC, along with its eight explanations, giving one illustration at least for each explanation, covering important leading cases also, it will take around one hour. You have to condense your answer to 30 minutes. <coughs> And dear students, this requires a practice beforehand. You cannot do it in the examination hall. You will have to practice at home. The next example is, suppose a full question is asked on suit to include whole of the claim under order two, rule two of CPC. Now material is very less, 30 minutes or more. Now you have to expand your answer so as to stretch its length up to 30 minutes. How will you do it? You can do it, you can stretch your answer by using the headings introduction in the beginning and conclusion in the end. You can use graphical representations, you can make diagrams, you can use equation method. I'll come to it very shortly. You can use the words doctrine of ratio resident I and judicial precedent. You can use the name of the author of the book. Like you are going to write the question of res judicata. You can start according to DF Mullah, following are the ingredients of res judicata. Dear students, please use the name of one book in each and every answer which you are going to write in the mains. 
Then finally comes the interview stage, which I equate with 2020 match. In 2020 cricket match, there are limited overs and the aim is to score as many runs or marks as you can. The interview stage is very similar to 2020 match where you have to impress the interview board in a short time you have with them. So give your best in the short time. And it is imperative for you to be well versed with the legal topics and current affairs around the world. And the best mantra for interview is be honest during the interview. If you do not know answer of a particular question, frankly say, I do not know, sir. Because honesty is the best policy and it pays you in, in interview. The reason is that you just cannot befool the examiner or interview board. They have a lot of experience. You cannot befool your examination board. And dear students, you know that marks of prelim examination are not added in the mains. Prelims is a just qualifying or elimination round where out of say 10 or 12,000 students take this round and only 10 times of vacancies are selected in prelims round. Say for example, if there are 100 vacancies, approximately 1,000 or 1,100 candidates are selected in prelims who will appear in the mains. And in the mains, only three times of the vacancies, that is 300 are selected and they are invited for interview. And finally, only 100 are selected and 200 are rejected. <clears throat> this is very important mantra, my dear students. Please listen it carefully. In interview, generally marks are awarded from minimum 40% to maximum of 70% out of 100. Your preparation of the mains should be so solid that this difference of 30 marks, you should be able to cover in the mains in advance so that finally you are selected even if you get only 40% marks in the interview. And you know that entire merit list also gets exhausted in the difference of this 40 marks or 30 marks. This means that if your one question is left, you are out of competition. If answer to your one illustration is wrong, you may be out of competition because this gap of 30 marks is too narrow. Now detailing out this scheme of examination once again and the preparation of the students and the pitfalls, I would like to tell you, dear students, that every one of you can secure 50 to 60% marks in law. One gets 20 out of 40 or 24 out of 40. This is a common average. But where lies the actual competition? What are the pitfalls? How to attempt a long question in the mains? I recommend that mantra for cracking mains examination is that you will have to prepare your own credit cards. What is a credit card? I'll tell you. And for preparation of credit cards, the art of expansion and reduction is very essential. How to find out the ratio decidendi of a case is also part of your examination. I'll come to it a little later. But now I'm discussing how to attempt an illustration. This is a general impression of the students. Suppose this illustration is asked in the examination of criminal law that A shoots B when he was sleeping. But B was not in the bed. What offense, if any, A has committed? Generally, students will write, sir, no offense is made out because the object of the crime was not there. Or maybe somebody writes, attempt to murder is there. One line answer. But the illustration is equivalent to full question, long question, 40 marks. 
my dear students you will have to write down all the ingredients of a crime first of all in an equation shape in a short form also like for a crime how many ingredients are required intention plus preparation plus act towards commission of the offense plus sufficient means plus object of the crime plus final act plus causal connection is equal to offense now discuss each and every ingredient whether all these ingredients are completely present in the given illustration or not then write down that offense is made out or not made out similarly i am taking another illustration from law of contract while attempting an illustration on formation of contract again discuss all the essentials of formation of a contract <clears throat> simple illustration before you is in the showroom a tag of rupees 5 is affixed on a ready made shirt but the shopkeeper refuses to sell it at rupees 5 and demands rupees 5000 for the same shirt whether shopkeeper is bound to sell you that sh that shirt for rupees 5 you can say no you can say yes answer to your question but the method which i am telling you is that you will first of all write down the ingredients of a contract like offer plus acceptance is equal to promise promise plus consideration is equal to agreement agreement plus legal enforcement is equal to contract <clears throat> now if all the ingredients of a contract are fulfilled in the given illustration then answer that a contract is made out and shopkeeper is bound to sell you the shirt at rupees 5 but if all ingredients are not complete one of them is missing like in this illustration tag of rupees 5 is just an invitation to offer so you can write down after discussing all these ingredients that first ingredient of the contract that is offer is missing in this illustration hence no contract was concluded between shopkeeper and the purchaser hence shopkeeper is not bound to sell the shirt for rupees 5 then you will get full marks otherwise your answer may be correct you, you might write down that there is no contract so shopkeeper is not bound but you will not get full marks that is the distinction how to attempt an illustration so in nutshell discuss all the ingredients of a contract are complete in the given illustration so you can write down there is a valid contract discuss if one of the ingredient of an offense is missing in the given illustration the offense is not made out that is no offense so you will have to discuss all the seven ingredients of an offense which are present in the given illustration and the offense is clearly made out if you simply write the answer that no offense is made out or you write down the offense of theft is made out without discussing the ingredients of a particular section you may get 8 marks out of 20 even if your conclusion is correct that amounts to 40% but using the above method discussing each and every ingredient of a contract or offense you will get up to 16 marks out of 20 that is 80% that will give you a jump in your merit list and dear students if you can identify the name of the case upon which the given illustration is based write down the name of the case also <clears throat> write down in the end that the facts of given illustration are borrowed from such and such leading case of say km nanavati versus state of maharashtra hence the offense of murder is made out according to ratio decidendi of the said leading case you may get even 18 marks out of 20 that is 90% please use these words ratio decidendi in all the five answers which you are going to attempt today in your competitive examination in the mains this is magic mantra magic words ratio decidendi i'll tell you how to find out the ratio decidend i of a case also but let us proceed dear students with this much introductory knowledge for you 
I am repeating that deep study of bare acts along with one textbook that is student edition is required. Don't, don't go for thick volumes, otherwise you will be lost. Read only student edition book along with bare act. Suppose you are going to read Indian panel code. Purchase the bare act latest edition. Don't go for old editions. They'll give you 20% discount also. Please purchase the latest bare act and latest textbook say, if you are reading Indian panel code, student edition Ratan Lal Dheeraj Lal will suffice. For law of contract, student edition by D.F. Mullah is very good. So you will have to confine to bare act plus one textbook that is student edition. Read section one from bare act and then read its commentary from the book. Dear students, there are certain pitfalls which I would like to warn you and they are indirectly mantras for your success. This I have said earlier also, but I'm repeating it at the cost of repetition, that practice of writing in digital era is very essential. Your fingers will pain while writing in the examination hall. This is the first point to be noted here. Then dear students, there are certain untouched areas of your syllabus. Certain barracks not covered in your BALLB or BBLLB or BCOM LLB curriculum. They are the local laws. All the local laws are not, not part of your curriculum in your university. You should take care of those local laws first. You prepare first for those local laws. People think that we'll prepare it in the last. No. The act which you have not studied during your LLB curriculum, you will have to prepare first. <clears throat> Next pitfall is practice of judgment writing. Nobody practices at home. They think that we'll go in the examination hall and we will produce the judgment in the hall itself. No. Practice of writing at least 10 civil judgments and 10 criminal judgments is a must. Likewise, practice of pressy writing, practice of framing charges and issues, practice of drafting plaints and written statements is very essential. And dear students, you will have to have selective study. You are supposed to prepare only 200 credit cards for you. Credit card is nothing but summary of your one question. Suppose you are writing, preparing a question of distinction between culpable homicide and murder. Summary on your table should be only of one page, one side of A4 sheet. <coughs> That's all. I may tell you, I may warn you that thick notes, bulky notes will lead you nowhere. Only short notes in the shape of credit cards will lead you to the success in this examination. Another pitfall, dear students, is that compulsory question in the examination, if not attempted, you will be out of merit list. Suppose, generally, the trend is you are supposed to attempt one question from part A and two questions for the remaining part B and C and question number one is compulsory. If you leave the compulsory question, simply you are out of competition because 40 marks are lost. Then dear students, general studies nowadays is the deciding factors because for law, all students are average and their marks are also average. All of your competitors will secure 50 to 60% marks in legal papers, but they fell down in general studies. For this, my dear students, you will have to read two newspapers daily, one in Hindi, one in English. You will have to keep newspaper clippings, keep them though, keep them in a guard file and then load it's somebody on your laptop daily. You can pick up any newspapers, all are good, like Hindu, Times of India, Hindustan Times, Hindi Hindustan. <clears throat> then dear students, 
translation from english to hindi and vice versa i have emphasized earlier also but take paragraphs from leading cases only for your translation i have experienced it during my practice of past years that translation in hindi is a tough job for convent educated students but my dear students don't be scared of it if convent educated students have english software in their brain their hindi is weak likewise students from hindi medium they have hindi software in their brain and their english is weak so both the groups are at par there should be no scary feeling that you do not know good hindi or you do not know good english then preparation of case laws you are supposed to prepare only ratio decedent i part of the judgment wherever you will write keshavanand bharti's case you will write only these two lines that parliament has power to amend each and every part of the constitution but they have no power to amend basic features of the constitution of india you cannot write the full judgment keshavanand bharti judgment runs into 900 pages you are supposed to write down only three or four lines so dear students key to your success mantra of your success is you please prepare your own credit cards that is the shortest summary of your answer and i told you that it must not exceed on one side only of a4 sheet it should be an answer at a glance so you will prepare around 200 to 225 credit cards for the mains which will contain only points and leading cases and you should revise your credit cards one week before your examination bulky notes my dear students are actually a burden on you where your table is piled up with the thick notes no it is a burden on you another mantra my dear students is very important in the mains you have an option of attempting one full question or two short notes both carry 40 marks out of 40 marks if you attempt one full question generally students are getting 15 marks 16 or 18 easily and examiner is in habit of awarding such marks commonly to all students but in a short note of 20 marks each you may get 15 in each short note also so 15 plus 15 in two short notes you can secure 30 marks which is not the possible case if you attempt one full question of 40 marks because this is the weakness of the examiner that generally he is giving 15 14 16 18 marks so he forgets examiner forgets whether he is attempting half question or he is uh, evaluating the full question it's not our mistake anyway then dear students the next month is suppose you are supposed to attempt five questions and you know only four but you must attempt all the five questions in any case even if five minutes or 10 minutes are left for the fifth question or you do not know the fifth question still you should attempt fifth question because you may get eight or 10 marks out of 40 in the fifth question that will keep you in the race of competition so attempting all the five questions is a must now here is an example of making a credit card before you write short note on any four 10 marks each and the first short note is formation of contract now you can write one hour on this formation of contract you can condense it in half an hour also for full question but here you are supposed to condense it for 10 marks that is one fourth question so you are to attempt four short notes carrying 10 marks each how will you do it you will get only 6 to 7 minutes for one short note and in 6 to 7 minutes you can write it like this offer plus acceptance is equal to promise promise plus consideration is equal to agreement agreement plus legal enforcement is equal to contract contract is complete now support your answer with few leading cases 
like mori bibi versus dharamdas ghosh you will write only one line contract with a minor is void abnishio lalman shukla versus gauridat one should have knowledge of offer before its acceptance then carlil versus carbolic smoke ball company acceptance can be made by performing the conditions of the offer and bhagwan das versus girdhari lal acceptance when complete in a contract on telephone you can get 9 marks out of 10 that is 90% and 90% you very rarely get in the field of law another caution for you dear students is that when i was doing my llb even most of our teachers did their law it was llb 3 years course old pattern where 80% syllabus was based on bare act and 20% was based on case law study but now llb integrated 5 years course in nlus and universities of delhi including jindal global university and ipu 80% syllabus is case law study based and only 20% is bare act based but be aware that for competitive examinations equal balance of bare act and case study is required complete preparation of the bare act and complete preparation of the latest case laws is required for cracking this competitive examination then dear students few misconceptions are to be given up by you you will have to give up your over confidence first of all this camouflage intelligence which is in vogue nowadays has to be given up suppose you secured 90% marks in high school examination you secured 95% marks in plus 2 but my dear students these 90 to 95% marks are equivalent to 30 to 35% for the purposes of your competitive examination if you appear in competitive examination with that preparation which you did for plus 10 and plus 12 you will secure only 30 to 35 percent marks you will have to uplift yourself from 30 to 35 percent to 60 percent and you will be the first top 10 positions in your batch if you secure 60 percent marks in your competitive examination is candidate tops the list with 60 percent marks judicial officer also this examination topper can uh, secures hardly 60 percent marks so please give up your over confidence and give up your camouflage intelligence come down to the real position in life <laughs> another mantra my dear students is keep short targets i am giving you very easy target prepare one question before lunch and one after lunch but remember the answer by heart this is the target and another mantra very important highlighted here in red, red color is that prepare for your mains exam first prelims will be ready automatically then you will go for prelims why i am saying so suppose you have qualified prelims time gap between prelims and the main examination is maximum 2 months and you cannot prepare mains in 2 months it needs one year so this is very important that you will prepare for your mains examination first and then you will go for prelims the day when your 200 credit cards are ready you are entitled to take up preliminary examination then dear students another important aspect another important mantra is please ask yourself these questions i am not imposing on you you please ask yourself have you selected the state you wish to appear or will you appear in the judicial services of all the states probably you cannot appear in examination of all the states because of local language if you want to appear punjab judicial services examination you should know gurmukhi punjabi as a language if you want to go to south kerala you should have the knowledge of their local language so please select your states like suppose you have selected delhi 
fine delhi judicial services examination up all right uttarakhand himachal rajasthan mp okay you can cover all these neighboring states but you cannot appear in each and every examination in all the states of our country so please select your state be clear in mind that you are to pick up delhi plus two more say up and haryana all right up and himachal but you cannot prepare for all these states you will have to be very selective then ask yourself number 2 have you collected question papers of 10 previous years relating to that particular state in which you are going to appear then have you gone through barracks repeatedly have you deciphered where to focus more and where to focus less and have you prepared ratio decidendi of few leading cases at least please ask these questions to yourself then ask yourself have you have you done writing practice because as i said earlier electronic gadgets will not go in the examination hall pen and paper mode will work hence writing practice is a must another question do you remember citation of few leading cases you must remember citation of say 5 to 10 leading cases when i was preparing for competitive examination i knew only one citation keshavanand bharti versus state of kerala AIR 1973 Supreme Court page 1468 I'm confessing that I I cracked this examination with the help of only single single citation of Keshavanand Bharti's case but you should know citation and correct names of at least 5 to 10 cases and mention those cases in your answers also then another question is do you remember the citation you should remember not more than 5 to 10 then are you using photographic capacity of your mind photographic capacity also pays you then the most important mantra is are you mentally ready for taking this examination why i am saying so actually dear students the competition is won first in the mind you should be determined and focused to win the battle it is a mental game so dear students before i proceed further here is a chart of up pattern preliminary examination which is objective type before you there are only two papers uh, one is general knowledge 2 hours 150 marks second is law paper 2 hours 300 marks total 450 now coming back to prelim preparation once again what is a multiple choice question you should know a multiple choice question is composed of two parts first part that identifies a question or problem and second part which contains a set of alternatives or possible answers that contain a key to the best answers to the question so two parts one is question or problem and second is set of alternatives very simple how to attempt a multiple choice question there are few unwritten rules for attempting multiple choice questions which i have deciphered for your benefit number 1 read the directions carefully before answering the question so that you know the rules most of the marks are lost in mcq through misreading of questions you do not read the question attentively and then number 2 read all the four answers very carefully before ascertaining the correct answer do not just glance and answer the question never jump to the conclusion and the most important pitfall is do not try to add your own facts in the given illustration because if you will add your own facts the answer is bound to go wrong and ascertain most correct and best answer according to degree of correctness maybe sometimes you will find that all the four answers are correct but degree of correctness correctness varies so you are supposed to answer the most correct answer then answer with efficiency speed and accuracy and the mantra is try to answer the question without looking at the given options 
meaning thereby answer the question in your brain first that will be the correct answer and then you can eliminate the distractions also analyze the options as given true or false especially in negatively worded questions put t before the answer which is true and f before option which is false besides each option then simply select the false statement and use common sense also in finding the correct answer here is one example before you how many parts of alloy are present in 22 karat gold this question can be answered by your common sense that pure gold is 24 karat and 22 karat is jewelry so only two parts are alloy 22 plus 2 is equal to pure gold 24 and answer all the questions unless there is a negative marking for incorrect responses if there is no negative marking in few states they do not have negative marking then you can take the liberty of answering all the questions but if there is negative marking i gave you illustration it can cause havoc in your life if you attempt the questions for which you are not sure so in negative marking please do not attempt a question if you have a doubt and if options simil appear similar think twice before choosing the correct option and the most important mantra here is after ascertaining the correct answer of a question fill the bubble on omr sheet then and there and then proceed to read the next question be very very careful that omr sheet is gradually and correctly filled one by one few students commit this mistake they decide and mark all the answers on a given booklet and in the end they will start filling the omr sheet maybe that you don't have time left in the end you will be out of competition so better it is attempt one question ascertain the correct answer and fill the omr sheet then and there you will find sometimes all the above is one of the option which is likely to be correct when for it to be correct the examiner has to customize the options that all were correct so if you cannot spot any wrong answer or see two or more options are correct then it increases the probability of all the above being correct then next answer is nota none of the above this answer is likely to be correct and for it to be correct the examiner has to customize the options that were all wrong so if you cannot spot any right answer or see that two or more options are wrong then it increases the probability of nota being correct then dear students be careful regarding questions having words except or not contained in it mark each option with t for true and f for false against each option and underline the word not as it is missed sometimes then find out the correct answer and if there is a typing or punctuation error in the answer that option is likely to be wrong why because examiner while framing your question paper and tending to proof reading he proof reads only of the correct answer galat to galat hai hai examiner will not bother regarding typing mistake or punctuation error in the wrong answer because that is already wrong so you can take the benefit of this also in your prelims stage of examination then always look for grammatical agreement between the question and its four answers if question is framed in plural answer is likely to be plural if question is framed in singular then answer will be singular and you can go with your first impression also first impression probably is always correct because more you read more you tend to read into the wrong answers and another mantra for mcq is least bad rule in election also when you are to decide for which you are for which party political party you are going to vote for you think are sir congress party is there bjp is there in up bsp is there samajwadi party is also there 
for whom to cast the vote all are bad so you choose the least bad party and then you finally vote for a particular party say bjp or congress or samajwadi party or bsp because you have no option but to choose least bad party so in these four options here also in mcq if you are held up you are stuck up go with this rule eliminate least likely answers first because bad but better than any other available option will be the best answer then dear students if you have never heard the answer it is likely to be made up cooked up and incorrect and if two opposite options are available one is likely to be correct then examiners first made up option is likely to be correct while framing answers i will frame the correct answer first and wrong one later on so if you have doubt between two opposite options then first made option is likely to be correct then dear students sometimes these options are coupled with qualifying words like sometimes or occasionally that reverses the answer and conversely sometimes these answers are coupled with words like absolute qualifiers like always or never this also changes the answer so be very very careful with these qualifiers in the question sometimes or occasionally or always or never then this is a normal rule that answer the question you know first skip the difficult questions or questions whose answers you do not know at all mark them with a cross and then visit them again if time is left and if you do not know please don't try to attempt those questions for which you are not sure in prelims because negative marking is there and dear student most common mantra and mistake is that in multiple choice questions the answers are to be selected and not generated it is a selected response assessment you are not supposed to generate your own, own answer there you are to select the best answer out of four given options then dear students please note that during your preparation there should be no panic no nervousness no disheartening no loading of your study table please keep only one bear act at your study table at a time do not stress your brain relax take full sleep sleep of 7 to 8 hours because active and conscious reading is essential instead of passive reading if you are tired stop reading relax by listening to music watch a movie go for a walking meet your friends relax yourself then dear students here is an example of a question for 1 crore rupees asked in kbc on sony television what should be the possible answer students will find out and write down in the chat box 2024 means a 2024 b 00044 c 0024 or d 2044 how do you write 2024 students are required to answer this question in their chat box c all answers are correct because in standard form we write 2024 as 2024 0044 cannot be the answer as it will be written as 0044 0024 will be written as 0024 and 2044 will be written as 2044 so the correct answer is a how simple and difficult question it is but you will have to use your common sense also dear students there is a comparison of difficulty level in mcq and sa type also truly speaking multiple choice question examination are actually difficult as compared to sa type examination because the mcq contains many questions they force the student to be familiar with much broader range of material than 
essay time exams too and the fact is that mcqs are rarely taught in the colleges during five year integrated course or training academies also during their teaching of professionally skill development activities mcqs are rarely taught but i am happy that at global law school there is a curriculum part of curriculum relates to mcqs and that's very essential for teaching in five year law courses also especially in phd activities uh, we here at gemtech school of law have developed the idea of giving multiple choice questions to students uh, presently i was teaching drafting and pleading paper here and it was really a challenge to prepare multiple choice questions in drafting and pleading because in drafting you are supposed to actually draft the plaint or ws or cld or the gift deed but how to uh, develop multiple choice question was a challenge for me but i did it for the benefit of students so i was talking about the distinction and difficulty level of mcq and mains dear students mcqs test only the superficial facts within a subject and calls for no overall knowledge of the subject whereas essay type answers can be spread out with irrelevant material also mcq requires pin pointed knowledge of the subject pin pointed knowledge of the subject whereas essay type you can deviate from pin pointed knowledge to some extent now dear students another difficult area another mantra to be given to you how to attempt assertion and reason based question frankly speaking i am confessing before you that i was never successful in attempting such questions in the prelims examination because i was not aware of the methodology how to attempt these questions which are based on assertion a and reason r so i am giving you one illustration how to attempt such questions assertion a is directive principles of state policy are relevant for determining the reasonableness of restrictions under article 19 clause 2 of constitution of india reason directive principles of state policy have been declared superior to the fundamental rights now there are four answers quotes are a both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a and reverse of it is b both a and r are true and r is not the correct explanation of a third option c a is true but or r is false fourth option a is false but r is true so first clue of attempting this type of questions is 50 50 50 50 here means either answer a or b is correct or c or d is correct this is other upar niche nahi sochna hai now to select whether a and b or c and d may be correct you will have to have a very clear cut perception about the truthfulness of assertion a and reason r see if both of them are true then answer will be a either a or b as the language says but if one of them is false tab a or b answer nahi hoga then answer will be either c or d this is the first clue don't be confused after reading all the four options because it is pre selected that either group of correct answers will be a b or it will be c d so the fundamental rule of attempting this question is that you should have the knowledge about the truthfulness of the statement now let us see the statement again directive principles of state policy are relevant for determining the reasonableness of the restrictions under article 19 clause 2 <clears throat> this is true correct assertion is correct reason r directive principles of state policy have been declared superior to the fundamental rights no aisa kabhi nahi hua that they never they were never declared superior to fundamental rights so r is wrong once 
either the statement assertion or the reason is wrong a and b answers are out of question because a and b are based on truthfulness of a and r as the a answer says both both a and r are true agar dono true honge tabhi answer hoga na likewise b both a and r are true unless they are true you cannot have this answer so here in this illustration r is wrong so answer will be c a is true but r is false very simple if you know this trick you can attempt this answer this question very easily and i am repeating it hint i am reading again a as well as r both should be true for answers a or b as its correct explanation or not if either a or r is false then answer a or b are out so be sure about the truthfulness of a and r if r has to be correct explanation of a then there should be something common between a and r this is the final clue something common between a and r assertion and reason in the present mq a is true but r is false so option a and b are already ruled out another illustration before you is assertion this question is based on section 9 of cpc assertion a a civil court has jurisdiction to try all suits of a civil nature bilkul theek hai yahi language hai section 9 reason the cognizance of a civil suit should be expressly barred ab hi all four options are same isko padhne ki zarurat nahi in all such questions this is the answer sheet ab dekhna ye hai ki either a and r both are true or not ye dekhna sabse pehle we'll read section 9 section 9 cpc courts to try all suits of civil nature unless barred the court shall subject to the provisions herein contained have jurisdiction to try all suits of a civil nature excepting suits of which their cognizance is expressly or impliedly barred then there are two explanations now see the hint in this mcq a is true and r is false let's go back to it a civil court has jurisdiction to try all suits of a civil nature it is true cognizance of a civil suit should be expressly barred this is not mentioned in section 9 cpc so r is wrong so in this mq a is true but r is false hence option a and b are ruled out now choose between c and d so answer is c a is true r is false similar illustration is based on this formation of contract you can go through it another same illustration on pleading guilty where no appeal lies so dear students now uh, having a look at the syllabus of up judicial services examination uh, as i told you prelims has two papers paper one is gk 10 items are there 150 marks and second paper 300 marks relating to law again we have 10 items jurisprudence comes in the prelims but not in the mains then dear students all of you must know that a uh, up psc civil judge examination consists of following features this exam mains is of conventional types descriptive questions there will be five papers 200 marks each plus plus interview of 100 marks and uh, paper 1 and 2 consists of gk and language paper 3 4 5 4 4 mains and then interview total marks 1100 this is the bifurcation of marks before you and the uh, items number of papers which are coming in each subject then this is the language paper it is also a deciding paper it involves essay writing pressy writing translation from hindi to english and vice versa our uh, dear students i have mentioned the number of questions number of credit cards to be prepared against each subject and for paper law third paper third law 1 200 marks 
uh, in all 85 credit cards are to be prepared, but I have highlighted constitutional law, which covers 50 marks. That is 25% of the entire paper. So you should give special attention to constitutional laws. Likewise, uh, in paper four, law two, procedure and evidence, 65 credit cards are to be prepared approximately and writing of judgments I have highlighted. You should give special emphasis on writing of judgment and practice. Then the last paper, law third, IPC along with local laws, but IPC is again of 50 marks. This is a balancing subject. So you should pay more attention to IPC. And so far as local laws are concerned, all questions from local laws are normally compulsory. So please prepare local laws first, because if you leave one question of relating to local laws, then you are out of competition. And this is the total 10 is to 1 ratio of mains versus interviews there. 1000 marks for mains and 100 marks for interview. So it comes out to be 10 is to 1. And this equation, I told you that the examiner is generally giving marks in the interview ranging between uh, 40 to 70. Because there is a Supreme Court case law that if an interview board is awarding less than 40 marks or above 70 marks, then they will have to record reasons. This happened in one case in UP. Uh, one of the candidate was awarded zero marks in personality test. So Supreme Court said that personality of a law graduate cannot be zero. It has to be minimum 40. And if it is below 40, then you will record reasons. So dear students, the warning is that this 40 marks in interview are equivalent to zero. But please do not worry about difference of these 30 marks. Try to cover these 30 marks in the mains. You will always remain in the merit list. So dear students, the thumb rule or the mantras for mains I have given you that attempt all five questions, time management, divide the time accordingly. Do not devote more than 30 minutes to a question, even if you know more. First attempt those questions that you know the best. Attempt two half questions instead of one full. Can you attempt six question also? Probably not. Now, the most important mantra planning and learning for your competitive examination Dear students is while reading the bear act or while reading your textbook, you have no right to turn to page number two, unless you have digested page number one. This is Mool Mantra, fundamental mantra, because if you fail to plan your studies, you are planning to fail. So you will have to draw a daily, weekly and monthly plan. 200 credit cards are to be prepared, attend your classes regularly. Then MCQs prepared by expert faculties will be given to you, followed by theory. You must learn the art of analysis of your own mistakes and mistakes done intentionally. Dear students, after your preparation of the subjects, I will take you to my legal parlor. As in the day of marriage, boy and girl go to the beauty parlor, for their press presentation on the day of marriage. I will take you to legal parlor for giving your best presentation while answering the question in the examination hall. And this use of legal parlor will train you how to use algebra in your answers. I told you equation method offer plus acceptance is equal to promise. Promise plus lawful consideration is equal to agreement. Agreement plus legal enforcement is equal to contract. This is equation method. Use of diagram. You can <coughs> illustrate these ingredients with the help of a flow chart diagram also. Please use the name of the author in all the five answers. Use law commission report if you remember. Number of law commission report. Use legal methods, research methodology, blue book mode of citation, use of footnotes, Underlining, use of highlighter, in underlining the important concepts. Use a footnote I have written. My dear students, I used this single footnote which I remembered 
relating to Keshav Nand Bharti's case in all the five questions in all the examinations. Somehow I brought the name of Keshav Nand Bharti there and used this footnote. None of the student in 10,000 or 2,000 answer sheets will use this footnote. And if you are using, your copy is distinguished from all others. Like similarly, use the words ratio decid and die. Ratio decid and die of Lalman Shukla versus Gauri Dutt says so. Baat wohi likhni aapko, but addition of the word ratio decid and die and citation of the case is very important. While reading book, if you know what is written in the paragraph, you can go for Z-shaped reading. Paragraph padna start ki jiye, cross nazar dal ye, niche a jiye. That's it. Because you know the ratio decid and die of Keshwanan Bharti, which is written in this paragraph. Why to read this paragraph again and again? This I have referred to as Z-shaped reading. This is another mantra. Then front reading. What is front reading? General index of your bear act and textbook for multiple choice questions. Because that will give you the section number. Where murder is defined, index will tell you. This is front reading. Then back reading. Back reading is like Urdu, starting from last page to first page. What is that back reading? That is reading of subject index in a textbook. Once I was confronted with the meaning of the word Damdupat. What is rule of Damdupat? How to find out in books? At that time, Google was not there. So I had to see the meaning of word Damdupat, first reading the subject index at the back of the book relating to law of contract. And then when I found alphabetically one A, B, C, D, Damdupat, Against it, page number was written. I, I went back to that page number and find out the meaning of word Damdupat. According to rule of Damdupat, the amount of interest recoverable at one time cannot exceed the principal. So dear students, try to distinguish your answer sheet from remaining stu students, remaining competitors. Your selection will be sure shot. You have to remove three zeros from 10,000. That is the number of students taking civil judge junior division examination. Remove three zeros, become 10, top 10, to assure your seat in the judicial services with the help of this legal parlor. You can use graphical representation, I told you. This picture illustrates the meaning of section 34 of IPC, common intention, constructive liability. You see in this picture, A and B, two persons, are strangulating the victim with the help of a rope. You see, A's role is 50%, B's role is also 50%. Because victim will not die if A alone is stretching the string. Victim will not die if only B is stretching and performing its 50% role. It is by stretching from both the sides that victim will die. And liability of A and B each is 100% under section 34 IBC, as if the entire act was done by A alone and B too, all alone. That I, I could not find better presentation of section 34 of IPC than this diagram which I prepared from internet, explaining you that although the role is 50-50, but liability is 100% for A and B both. And this is what is section 34. Whenever there is a common intention of committing a crime, the liability of each partner is full. So you can use this methodology. If you use this methodology, you will be the topper of your batch. Next illustration before you is, this relates to the fundamental concept of UPZA and LR Act, Uttar Pradesh Zamidari Abolition and Land Reform Act. You see in this diagram, uh, sun is there, trees are there, uh, animals are there, hut is there, uh, water well is there, tractor is there. What does, does it indicate? And beneath the tree, you see there is a black lining. Beneath the hut, there is a black lining. In the well, there is a white lining. This means that zamidari of entire agricultural land was abolished, except the site of the tree 
site of the hut site of the house and site of the well the site of tree well and huts residential buildings was settled with the existing owners thereof this is the central idea of upzda and lr act contained in its section 9 so you can use this diagram while attempting this question and the constitutional validity was tested in surapal singh versus state of up air 1952 supreme court page 52 and the act was constitutionally held valid and the central idea of this act is land must remain with the tiller of the soil my dear students i know i am tired you are also tired so let us listen a story what is the story let's go to the story and this story is that four brothers a b c d a is resident of greater noida in 2 bhk and its value is 40 lakhs b brother is also a resident of greater noida in 2 bhk value 40 lakhs third brother c resides in new delhi with 1 bhk value is 60 lakh and another brother d fourth one also resides in new delhi 1 bhk cost is 60 lakh now four brothers who were living separately they united and purchased 6 bhk flat in sector 62 noida <coughs> for rupees 2 crores now they will share this 6 bhk see now area of a and b of greater noida was 2 bhk each it will be less in noida as land is costlier in noida than greater noida so they will come to 1 bhk from 2 bhk and similarly the area of c and d jo delhi mein reh rahe the will be more in noida they were having 1 bhk now they will get 2 bhk in noida why because land is cheaper in noida than in delhi so the area versus valuation is the test of distribution of 6 bhk between four brothers and this is the fundamental spirit of up consolidation of holdings act where the fields at four places i have four agriculture fields in my name but they are scattered uh, with a distance of say 5 kilometers or 10 kilometers or 2 kilometers in a village if all these four plots are consolidated at one place the agriculture will be easiest for me and it will yield more so grow more food is the central idea of up consolidation of holding sect and you can draw these diagrams with the rough hand in the your answer sheet you will get full marks then new developments are like this this if if if, if i am to prepare a preliminary examination question paper for is examination i will draw this diagram and will give four option what what this diagram is depicting any student can answer this question please write down in the chat box test tube baby again the same question of is standard test tube is there baby is there 500 rupee notes are there and on other, another side law of surrogacy in india a law book is there what does it represent what is the name of the case name of the case is baby manji yamda versus union of india and second one is union of india versus jan balas to be read with surrogacy regulation bill 2016 which is still pending before the parliament now please name the leading case again is standard question is before you students will write down in the chat box which leading case do you recall in your brain in your mind while looking at this diagram where there is a jeep and there is a donkey who is badly injured and bleeding so dear students this is graphical method of teaching the name of the case is davis versus man in law of torts contributory negligence and the principle is last opportunity of avoiding the accident which name of the case do you remember while looking at national anthem and tricolor flag regal cinema knot place new delhi 
playing national anthem before the film here is the picture of cinema hall before the movie everyone is standing and national anthem being played the name of the case you will tell me is sham narayan choksi versus union of india later on this screening of national anthem was made optional in the same case now please identify these five judges and identify the case decided by them five judges of five faiths students are supposed to write down the answer in the chat box which case was decided by these five judges and next day in the newspaper this cartoon was published where petitioner is trying to remove the blindfold from the lady justice the symbol of justice and the name of the case is shaira baro versus union of india along with gulshan praveen versus union of india wherein triple talaq old custom was declared unconstitutional overruling the case of rashid ahmed versus anisa khatun so this is how dear students you are supposed to prepare for your prelims as well as mains examination uh, can you tell me any relevancy of this symbol of indian rupee with preamble of constitution of india raw hindi word raw and there are two parallel lines over there this picture was designed by mr d uday kumar from tamil nadu two parallel lines cutting the symbol of rupee in hindi ra means that india believes in economic equality please identify the director principle of state policy and identify the article of constitution of india after looking at this diagram one nation one code sign of christianity muslim hindu sikh isai everything is there so this is uniform civil code article 44 if i am to frame your question paper i'll put this diagram in your prelims supreme court said cbi is like a parrot in a cage name the case students please write down in the chat box the name of the case if you can identify is rahul bhumavat versus deputy director directorate of enforcement mumbai in which supreme court commented that cbi is like a parrot in a cage this was a sort of structure on the functioning of independence of cbi then see this diagram privacy view rights constitution article 21 fundamental judgment sir what happens to our right to privacy now the answer is clear that this case is justice k s puttaswamy versus union of india relating to right to privacy now dear students please identify this picture and name the case decided by honorable supreme court i think every student of dindal global law school can identify this picture where this building is situated in sonipat and you are supposed to write down the name of the case in your chat box this diagram and the case is a brain child of our honorable uh, the chairman sir uh, wherein the case was filed in the mp high court and then appeal went to the supreme court titled as union of india versus navin jindal and another uh, wherein it was held that freedom of speech and expression right to fly national flag on private buildings is part of freedom of speech and expression thanks to uh, shri navin jindal sir uh, that he approached the supreme court and gave the right to fly national flag on private buildings as part of freedom of speech and expression to the citizens of india thank you sir thank you for your endeavor once again from my side now dear students uh, the most important mantra for your mains examination as well as uh, prelims and interview is how to find out the ratio decidendi of a case i wish to uh, i have a separate lecture on this but briefly i am telling you there are two tests wombok test and good heart test for finding out the ratio decidendi of a case see you have to see the propositions laid down by the high court or supreme court 
and the first test is reversal test add english word not in the proposition of law given by the judges and see if the decision gets reversed if yes then that proposition is the ratio decedent die of the case suppose in keshavanand bharti's case you write down the word not in the proposition of law given by the supreme court that parliament can amend each and every part of the constitution including the basic structure of the constitution so by addition of word not or making the sense in the negative the decision gets reversed so that proposition of law is the ratio decedent i of the case and similar will be the result in good heart test the material fact of the case plus decision thereupon the most material fact of keshavanand bharti's case was this that parliament has power to amend each and every part of the constitution except the basic feature so result of these two tests will be the same and then i'll give you in details the value of doctrine of star decisis doctrine of resuscitation uh, also when we'll take up this uh, lecture separately so we have seen uh, dear students the judgment of justice k s puttaswami also wherein the adm jawalpur case was overruled and the peculiarity here is that justice yv chandrachud was a judge in adm jawalpur's case which was over overruled by his son justice dy chandrachud in k s puttaswami's case so this question can be asked can you name a case where the future generation of judges overruled the ratio decedent die of previous judges so one example is justice k s puttaswami versus union of india and second instance is shrimati somitri vishnu versus union of india the initial judgment by justice y v chandrachud uh, was that section 497 of ipc is constitutionally valid but now in joseph shine versus union of india again justice d y chandrachud was one of the judges constituting the bench uh, they held that section 497 and 198 crpc are constitutionally invalid so another illustration where future generation of the judges have overruled the ratio decedent die of ratio decedent die decedent die given by their previous generation or fathers dear students can you name the leading case where none of the option nota was to be added in electronic voting machine the name of the case is pucl and another versus union of india where election commission was directed to provide a column as nota in every electronic voting machine then important case which you should remember is shreya singhal versus union of india where section 66 capital a was declared unconstitutional in which case this vv pat machine was introduced the name of the case is very important dr subramanian swami versus election commission of india vv pat stands for voter verifiable paper audit trail machine when you cast your vote on evm you get a paper slip which is confirmation of casting of your vote then this picture depicts equality between male and female and sometimes there are questions like in the interview you may be asked uh, give one illustration where high court judgment wins over the supreme court so this is one example where nas foundation versus government of the city of delhi delhi division bench of delhi high court struck down section 377 of ipc then suresh kaushal versus nas foundation division bench of supreme court held that section 377 ipc suffers from no constitutional infirmity but again in navtez singh johar versus union of india judges unanimously held that section 377 is violative of article 14 19 and 21 and now consensual homosexual acts are decriminalized so judgment of the delhi high court is restored this is what i wanted to illustrate before you this is picture relating to right of fetus and mtp act then first aadhar card in india was issued to 
Ranjana Sonavane of village Tembli in district Nand Nandurbar, Maharashtra. And Supreme Court in Justice Case Putta Swami versus Union of India upheld the validity of Aadhaar Act. So the constitutional validity of Aadhaar Act was upheld in this judgment. Then dear students, you must keep updated yourself with the latest thoughts. Uh, I have written around a dozen articles recently on robotic rights, rights of frozen bodies, access to justice, and many more, uh, which you can uh, read from internet. Now, the last mantra, dear students, is the equation of memory, because books will not go in the examination hall, only your memory will go. And the mantra is, make a reading habit. Because seven teachings are equivalent to one reading. If you are listening a lecture seven times, you will retain the memory equivalent to one reading only. If you have read it from book, then seven readings are equivalent to one writing. I am emphasizing that writing practice is a must. Whatever you will retain by one writing will be equivalent to seven into one seven times. Then seven writings are equivalent to one thought. Thought will give you 49 times memory in your brain. Because when you give thought to any concept, you tend to assimilate the subject matter. Assimilation is the most important word for your preparation for the exam. How much you have assimilated today out of my lecture? That is important. Listening, reading, attending the class is important. Provided at the end of the class, you have assimilated something in your brain, which you can shell out in the examination hall. My dear students, your mind is like a bank. What you deposit is what you can withdraw in the examination hall. So consistency in deposit. Preparation of your two credit cards per day, one before lunch and after lunch is the key to your success. Consistency in deposit, I am repeating, is the key to your success. And there are three these for you three dimensional studies one is discipline second is dedication and third is determination first d for our purposes is concept clarity through direct you must have concept clarity as to what is what is rule against perpetuity clarity of concept then study of case laws for the preparation of mcqs also then final d is preparation of credit cards 200 credit cards are to be prepared. The day you prepare 200 credit cards, I can assure that you will be the in the first 10 positions of your batch when you appear in this competitive examination. So assimilation is very important. Be aware of digital dementia nowadays. That is also very important. Why I'm saying so? because the hard work beats the talent when talent does not work hard. So regularity and consistency matters more. Invest your seven to eight hours preparation daily instead of studying one day for 18 hours and then not touching the books next two days and update your schedule daily. Every morning set a target about part of syllabus you wish to cover for that day and at night, Audit your output. That will keep you on the track. And dear students, the most important mantra, you are in the best law college of the country. That is Jindal Global Law School. And the best faculties are there to transmit knowledge from their brain to your brain. But knowledge has to travel from the mind of a teacher to the mind of a student through there is a bridge of faith through a bridge and that bridge is bridge of faith that is required because stronger the bridge better the delivery so have faith in your best teachers you can't be daunted if you are determined to succeed so be fearless in your pursuit entire jindal global law school entire each and every faculty of law is with you start feeling special feel that you are going to be a judge and for this, you will have to have confidence like a ringmaster in a loin's cage in a circus. You see, loin can kill the ringmaster at any moment. But 
It is the confidence of the ringmaster that keeps him undaunted from the lion in his cage in the circus. So your confidence should be equivalent to the confidence of the ringmaster and your focus and determination should be the like focus of Barack Obama, the ex-president of USA. Dear students, when Barack Obama was in class 10th, one day teacher asked each and every student to write down their responses as to what they want to become in life. So somebody wrote that he'll become a cricketer, somebody wrote he'll become a tennis player or I'll play guitar. Somebody says I'll become engineer or doctor. But Barack Obama wrote that I want to become president of USA in class 10th when he was. And with his focus and determination and confidence, he became the president of USA. So dear students, your focus and determination should be that strong before you start your preparation for this competitive examination. So your eye on the goal is a must. Your positive thinking, reinforcing yourself daily, reconnecting yourself daily with your goal of becoming a judge is very important. And lastly, I wish that all of you will take oath with me. Take oath that I can and I will become a judge. I think that is the best placement of your life as a law graduate. And dear students, you may be elevated to the high court, even to the Supreme Court as a judge after joining subordinate judiciary or high judicial services. So I wish all the best to all my dear students of Global Jindal Law School. So thank you very much. Uh, I am grateful to the management of uh, Jindal Global University and Jindal Global Law School that they have given me this wonderful opportunity of having interaction with the expert faculties as well as the students. I wish God bless all of you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Professor Dr. Bal, we're really grateful for this insightful lecture. I'm sure our students feel motivated and guided, uh, especially with the tips like credit cards, the legal parlor, and uh, we will try and incorporate all of those uh, suggestions. And uh, with this, we come to an end of the first extended lecture. We just had one, uh, one question on the comment uh, section, which was regarding when should a second year student start preparing, but that has already been addressed in the lecture. So like uh, Professor said, it's, it's now is the right time. So with all the tips and tricks that we have now, uh, I think anybody can start preparation at this time. So there's, there's not, never a wrong time to do the right thing. Um, yeah. On that note, I, on behalf of JGLS, I'm grateful to Professor Dr. Bal for kindly agreeing to deliver today's lecture. So we look forward to hosting you again soon, uh, hopefully in our campus. Uh, the next lecture, much. of course, is uh, scheduled to be held at 5 p.m. today on Saturday, uh, wherein Advocate Amit Anand Tiwari will be discussing Union Judiciary, the Supreme Court chapter. Uh, we have shared the link with you. We will again share reminder emails and we look forward to your active participation in the same. Thank you so sure, much. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.